My name is Byron Barakal, and I am the House A2 at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester, New York. My world would be the monitor system. That is how the musician that's on stage actually hears themselves when they're performing. It's a separate system from the front of house system that is the mix for the audience. The monitor system is the mix for the band. As the monitor engineer, I'm mixing for the band. I'm not mixing for me. I'm not mixing for the crowd. I'm mixing for the band. Different musicians are, are different depending on what kind of band they're in, what kind of music they're playing. That's the biggest factor. And then the other big factor is just they're people. So people have different personalities. People hear things differently. You could have a musician that's a drummer. He may want all of his drums in his mix or no drums in his mix or a full mix. And then you can move over to someone who is a guitar player and singing at the same time. Maybe he doesn't want to hear the drums crashing and banging away. He just wants to hear his vocal nice and clean. Yeah, the people that I rely on on a day-to-day -day basis uh, are really my crew chief and my front of house engineer. Without them, I wouldn't be able to get it done. My crew chief makes sure all the gear gets in and put on stage where it's supposed to go. And my front of house engineer makes sure that we have an overall master plan that we're sticking to and kind of guide us all the way to the end through the sound check, through the show. So the similarities between monitor world and the front of house mixer are that we're, we're both running an audio console, we're both seeing the same inputs from the stage, and we're both generally operating on the same principles of audio and wave propagation, but that's pretty much where it ends. He can use a lot more bells and whistles out at front of house to, to make like a radio mix as opposed to where in monitor world, if I started pulling rabbits out of hats, musicians, uh, they'll hear it and they may or may not like it. I have to be able to read all their body language, looks, read their lips, because once the show is up and running, they can't come over and speak to me about what they need like they did during soundcheck. Uh, during the show, it's it ha we have to give the illusion that everything is running smoothly. I started in the, the school band in grade school. I was fortunate enough to go to a school that offered music. And then I wound up in a garage band in high school that had some kind of local Notoriety. We played a lot of, a lot of bars and, and local venues, and uh, I just got into, to mixing. I had, full time jobs, you know, back home before I got into it, and I was always moonlighting. And then, uh, about 15 years ago, I finally made the leap and uh, and went pro, and uh, it's been a blessing ever since. I started in the summer of 2015, and my first show on was Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Johnny Lang. And uh, I had worked in a smaller theater in Manhattan for several years before I came here. Uh, so just the size and the scope of the shows that are coming in and out of this room was, uh, was a bit of an adjustment. But uh, when I started working here, everybody was super experienced. Everybody was, was a rock star. So just feeling like I was joining like, you know, a super A team uh, and being here was like, it was the shock for me. <laughs> I think the capital strikes a chord with our fans because we're we're such an integral part of, of rock and roll history here and uh, our fans really like to hang on to it. It's it's going to go down in in American history as you know, all these cultural icons that came through here. It all happened. It all happened here. <laughs>